And so I really, I, it, we're a room of disciples today. I mean, you, you left something outside to come in here on a Saturday. What I mean is that there was a version of you that had a Saturday football and mowing and barbecuing or whatever, and that version of you doesn't exist now, maybe in your mind, and you're kind of, and on your phone, checking scores, but that ver that version, you already checked. <laughs> that, was break, that was what the break was for. There's a version of you that sort of stayed out there because there's a version of you that come in here. And, and I know as elementary as that seems, that's happening to you in real time every day. You turned left when you could have turned right. And the fact that you turned left created an entire new world. Like one massive choose your own adventure story where, you know, if you, if you follow the, if you eat the red pill, turn to page 42. If you eat the blue pill, turn to page 115. And the whole story, your whole life's that. And, and it's, it's laying down what you could have been to be what you are. And so you're a room of disciples today. You made a decision and a choice at some point to walk into this room. But that was part and parcel of a bunch of other choices, part of which started way back whenever you said yes to Jesus. And so at that moment, you took another turn, and your life began to take the developments and the twists and the turns that it has now. And even the, no, regardless of the turn, a bunch of life finds you along the way, regardless of which way you turn. And so maybe bankruptcy finds you whether you turn to Jesus or not. And maybe cancer finds you whether you accept Christ or not. And maybe depression hits whether you accept Christ or not. And that's a toughie to push off on to get a lot of Christians to even believe, much less to amen, because what it says is that bad things happen to good people that make good decisions. Now, we all know that at a deep level, that bad things happen to people who didn't do anything to make bad things happen, but they happen. And it breaks a lot of people, even Christians. It breaks them because they came into this under the persuasion that by accepting the turn left or right to accept Jesus, they were avoiding a lot of other things in their lives, and therefore anything bad could not possibly come their way because they made the most appropriate decision to accept Jesus. And I think we've misunderstood faith. Amen. Faith is not the call to accept Christ so that there are less things that go wrong in our life. Faith is the call to accept Christ so that when all of the things go wrong in our life, someone walks alongside of us. Amen. And I think that's been lost a little bit. And grace doesn't save you from catastrophe happening. The message of the cross and the finished work and favor do not save you from problems happening. But they equip you in a way that you would never been equipped had you turned the other way. And we need to focus a little bit more, I think, in the message of grace on helping people understand what they're walking into and how they might be able to avoid some of this in life rather than just saying, hey, the favor of God's going to keep you from all that. That's fun to shout to, and then comes Monday, right? right? And you get out there on Monday and go, whoa, what happened to conference? I was supposed to be walking in favor. You are walking in favor, and now understanding what that looks like might make a little bit of a difference in our walk. And so I really think that, and I want to kind of start here and then end here, all right? I like to sort of bring it full circle. The Bible talks about, the New Testament has a very peculiar oxymoronic statement. Only Paul uses it in Romans 12 when he says, present your bodies a living sacrifice. It's an oxymoron because sacrifice by definition is dead. You can not possibly be a living sacrifice. You could be living to be a sacrifice someday. Maybe that lamb lives to be sacrificed, but how could you possibly be a living sacrifice? That's because, and we'll build up to this today, but I think what the Apostle Paul is presenting is this idea that discipleship is leaving what you could have been behind so that you go be what he would have you to be. And he walks that out with you. And that is a constant living sacrifice. That is you alive. By the way, when someone talks to you about living sacrifices, don't emphasize sacrifice nearly as much as you emphasize living. That's our problem. We hear things about sac living sacrifice and while we think about something dies. No, the first word is living. So, 
If you're not living, that's not the sacrifice the Holy Spirit wants. So be living and living in a way in which you understand that you've left something behind so that you can embrace something out in front of you. You see, I think essentially the call to faith is a call to adventure. And I want to work from that premise today all the way up to being a living sacrifice that the call of faith is essentially the call to adventure. That the Holy Spirit, I call him the Holy Spirit, he who walks alongside of us, a paraclete, a comforter, that essentially what he's doing by calling out to us is challenging us to take a step out into something we don't see so that we can become something we don't see but that we are destined to be. That call to adventure.